Brad, my man, how you going? Good to be here. How are you? Sit down great man. Now, it's my uh, absolute pleasure to be sitting alongside, firstly, one of my good mates ahead of his, his 200th game on Sunday against Sturt. Brad, how are you feeling about uh, 200 games, lacing up the boots for 200th time? It, uh, it must be pretty special. Have you had lots of texts and messages throughout the week? Had a few kind messages, Darcy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, been a, it's been a good week so far. But, um, but no, I'm just keen for Sunday to roll around now and, and uh, just want to get into it. It's, um, I think it's good that it's an elimination final because it probably takes uh, away from me a little bit and can just focus on trying to trying to win and, and set, keep the season progressing. I was going to say, you're, you're a bit of a, a mastermind of the milestone games now. You're probably looking forward to just going out and, and playing the game on Sunday. Yeah, been fortunate enough to take a few off now. So, it's, uh, yeah, every game's a big game, isn't it? Um, yeah. And uh, I think we had this chat early in the year, maybe. Do you reckon you get 5% on a milestone game? Or do you reckon it's... It's, it's a great question. Usual? It's a great question. I'm not sure. I think I think for you, 200 games is pretty special. So, I know I'm pretty excited. I think the other boys are as well to, to get out there and, and have a crack on Sunday. But got to clear something up as well, just at the start, so we can, yeah, we can get yeah, through it. Might come. Here we go. Um, I've known you for a little while now, about 10, 11 years. I'm not sure if you are a country boy or a city boy. There's lots of talk that you are still claiming to be a country boy. The amount of times I've had a phone call to come around your house and, and knock something up as quick as I can or, or <laughs> help you out with something has been probably ridiculous, uh, but I'm a bit of a handyman myself and, been, and happy to help you out. But, so just to clarify, on camera we've got this, is it is yeah. it country or city boy at the moment? Uh, it's, well and truly country. Yeah, it's, it's country. Well country. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like families from the land, uh, nanny grandpa, country people. And I, yeah, even if I wanted to convert to the city, uh, I think the, the annual, annual cricket, oh yeah, that too, but the annual cricket day each year oh, comes around. Wow. Um, yeah. And yeah, I probably made the mistake at a young age of of uh, really yeah, dominating those cricket days yeah. and yeah. in the country team. Um, so yeah, when the time came, we probably spent more time in the city. Um, yeah, the country boys wouldn't let me leave that team. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah no, well and truly the country, Darcy. Now, touching on, on the country as well, you're a bit of a, I'm, I'm hearing, a bit of a child prodigy growing up. It was obviously <laughs> football, the big three as they, as they call it. Yeah. Football, cricket, where you had the nickname Iron Gloves, I believe. <laughs> And then also lacrosse as well. I think you were riding to lacrosse as you got a little bit older. What was that like uh, growing up in the country? And yeah. what are some of your earliest memories of, of playing in the country? I know country towns typically are, you know, heavily invested in sport. If you're not playing, you're, you're involved some some way or shape or form. Yeah. What are your, what are your earliest memories? Where'd you grow up? I always say it wrong. Kyby Bola. Kyby Bola is correct. Is that yeah. Right? Ky yeah Ky so Ky grew up there. Who'd you play for there? What age did you start playing footy? I uh, started at Kyby in. I would have been 12 yeah. in the under 14s, the junior Colts they call it. Yeah. Um, before that, I did the typical Oz kick and that yeah. sort of stuff as yeah. you do. Uh, but yeah, got serious uh, under 14s. Played a, played two years at Kybe, um before the family moved up to Adelaide. Yeah. Um, so yeah, only a couple of years of country footy, and then uh, and then yeah, straight into the juniors here under 13s, yeah. 14s, 15s. Work your way up. Um, so I sort of juggled that with. With the school footy commitments and uh, a bit of a couple of years at Goodwood Saints as well, so yeah. uh, that was sort of the junior path, yeah. um, and then yeah, led into into under 18s and uh, and then yeah, seniors from there. So Moon got involved in the Glenelg Footy Club with our programs there. Won a premiership under 18s. Yeah, we had a good strong group there. Um, I keep forgetting you're sort of that, that three to four years old and Snook and yeah, those guys. Yeah, I know Snook's about 38, 30, 30, 30, 30, but yeah, years old I'm, I'm probably aging a bit better than Maddie, so he might look a little <laughs> bit older. So, uh, but yeah, believe it or not, he was born in '92. I was '91. Inside so. me, it's a life inside me, isn't it? All about tough kid. Yeah, 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 tough kid. Under 18, with the premiership debut the next next year for your first league game. Yeah, yeah, was lucky enough. Uh, Mark Mitten coaching at the time. Uh, yeah, debuted round one. 2010 was against Nor Norwood at home here. Yeah, um, yeah it's a great day. I, uh, I think we won by about 80 points in the end. Oh, big nice. win. Um, got about two hours sleep the night before. It was just so excited. Couldn't wait to get out here. And uh, times were different back then. It's yeah. probably a bit, bit old fashioned where you, you sit on the bench for a good yeah. sort of 20, 30 minutes before you get a run, and yeah. you're on for two, and then off for another 20. Yeah. So it was <laughs> just happy to be out there. Yeah, and uh, just happy to be there. Managed to kick a goal first game. And, yeah, uh, yeah probably kick another for two or three years after that, so uh, no, it was a great day. Well, that, that's part of it as well with football highs and lows, and we, you play 200 games, you're going to have some some of those. Yeah, yeah. That year, did you break your leg that year, or was it the year after? Did you cement yourself in the team for a couple of years and yeah. then had, a, had a, a, a major setback? Was that your first one? Yeah, I had uh, I had a broken right fibula, right fibula, I think it was, yeah. uh, towards the end of that year. So, so first year, end of the year playing, break your leg. Yeah, yeah. I was in the team, I was managing to find some form, and then... Um, I think it was yeah, around 15, 16, uh, broke my leg and 
and it was only maybe a four or five week recovery, so I was trying yep. to come back for, we made the finals that year, I think we played an elimination final maybe, so I was trying to push for that, but I was probably just a week or two off, so I yep. so missed that, we lost and, and the season finished up. Um, so it was then, only four to five weeks that broke me. Yeah, well, I had this uh, Dr. Mark Susanna at the time. The great man. He'll be great watching man. as well. Yeah, shout out to Cez. He hooked me up with uh, one of those, what are they called, the little uh, radi radiographer machines or something that sends yeah. little shockwaves through and um, yeah, sped up the recovery. Ahead of his time, Cez. Ahead of the time, Cez, yeah. 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 Um, so he did all he could, but it wasn't enough in the end, unfortunately. Okay, so moving forward, there's lots of other injuries throughout your career as well, but I want to touch on, was it 22 years of age you became captain or 23? 22, yeah. 22, what was, yes. what was that like? I know you co-captained with, with Ty. Yeah. Um, how did you find that experience? I think for me, thinking of guys around the league who are 22, 23 years old now, for me it's just a, a, a crazy thought to have someone, I guess, lead young men but also established AFL players who come back into playing against NFL. What was that What was that like for you? Was it something that you really enjoyed? Were you thrown into it and then sort of learned the deep end? Yeah. Um, how did you go with that? I loved it. It was a, a bit of a whirlwind. Yeah. Um, Nick Stevens' first year, uh, so new coach. Um, I was lucky enough to do it with Ty. If I, if I did that on my own, I think it'd be quite tough, but I had that support there. Uh, Ty probably missed the first maybe month or two through injury, so it was probably just me doing it, game day on my own, um, yeah, which was a good experience. And uh, as you know, we probably struggled a bit that year um, yeah. in terms of getting wins on the board, but uh, yeah, I still remember it being an enjoyable year. Like, we had a good young group and uh, had a lot of fun, and um, even though we weren't winning, we had some good players there, and you could tell we had probably the nucleus that there. Core group, didn't we? Eight to ten guys, you know, yeah, just to hang around. Just to hang and then yeah, Ty obviously finished up the end of that year, and uh, I went on to do it sort of on my own for the next few years after that. Yeah, so that how, was, how uh, long was that for? Uh, it was 2015 to 2017. Yeah, did that on my own, um, and yeah, once again, it was yeah, I loved it. Um, good fun. The challenging part being uh, success wise, we didn't play any yeah. finals and yeah. um, sort of yeah, bottomed out a little bit and started to to come back up. But um, no, I enjoyed the challenge and. Uh, managed to play some good footy uh, individually and then uh, probably injuries hit 2016 and that's when it um, probably got a little bit harder from there, not being out, out on the park as much yeah. and uh, being able to help out, but um, yeah, all in all, still loved it. So 2016, is that when the, the collarbone started? Take yeah. us through that. So you've had, <laughs> have you done both sides and then had to go back in and, and yeah. do another one? It's a bit of a journey, yeah. So 2016 out at Alberton, uh, yeah, John Butcher at the northern end sort of got a hold of me and once he tackled me, the big fella, I knew I was in a bit of strife. <laughs> So sort I of went down on my left side and just felt the collarbone pop uh, straight away. So yeah, that was sort of season done, 2016. Uh, came back yeah, for 2017 and went back out to Alberton a year later and uh, and uh, had my head over it as, as I do, Darcy. You, you know, do, it's yeah. always it's head big, over big it. Big Aiden yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aiden Johnson, KG, yeah. tripping wet, the great man. Jump, <laughs> jump flying off the square and, and uh, Targeted head over it. Yeah, bang. So yeah. Uh, right side went the year after. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much identical, identical break. Um, poor Matt Liptak had his hands full trying to yeah, trying to piece together both sides. Breaky, so, yeah. Breaky, in there. It was uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. So uh, yeah, had that one done, and then um, yeah, sometime that 2017 year, I managed to refracture the left side. I had yeah. the plate in there and had some shoulder pain that year, and uh, didn't think much of it. And then um, yeah, Lippy went in there at the end of the year and had a look and. And I came out of surgery and he said, oh, the plate's actually in two because uh, yeah, right. <laughs> somehow it had fractured during that year. So I had, uh, yeah, had to wait um, about six weeks and then went back in and, and had a bone graft. So I had a bit of artificial stuff put in and another plate uh, from there. So 2018 missed a little bit from that. and then, yeah. Um, But yeah, touch would have been pretty good since. Yeah, yeah it been, been very good since. Um, it would have been devastating as well for those collarbones. I just had a thought the first time I met you was in, was in the gym, the old gym before the the infamous storm blew the roof off and we got, <laughs> the, got the rebuild down yeah, here, but yeah. I've never seen someone put as much work into their upper body as you. Like, you almost wouldn't take your eyes off the mirror looking at yourself. <laughs> the arms were huge, uh, weren't they? Is that, was that by design or was that genetic? Is that part of, I guess, growing up on the farm, on the land? Yeah, probably just chop wood, carry yeah. water. Farm strong, I think they, they call it, they yeah. Call bars yeah. of hay and stuff, tossing around, so. Uh, nah, we, we uh, didn't have mirrors in the gym then, so I don't know where you've, where you've found the mirror call from, but um, I think it was, a good friend Damien Raiders was the oh. strength and conditioning coach uh, when I first started and, and he had no shirt policy in the gym so you'd actually have to go in and take your shirt off and, yeah. and lift your weights with, without a shirt on so he um, he didn't touch any weights, he just sort of walk around and flex yeah. so I think that rubbed off on a few of the boys. I think it did, really different unit right now wasn't it? Yeah, different, yeah, strange. Yeah. So 
captaincy ends, you decide to to sort of relinquish your, your capabilities there. What was the thinking behind that, just to sort of free yourself up a little bit and get back to, to focusing on just playing football? Or Yeah, pretty much, yeah. 2018 was, I sort of uh, couldn't probably recapture some form that I had before and uh, and struggled for probably, yeah, the first time in my senior career and um, wasn't really loving footy the way I had in the past and, yeah. and uh, probably put a bit of pressure on myself and um, yeah, we got on a nice winning streak towards the back end of the year and I still didn't really feel like I was sort of contributing and and uh, and wasn't really loving it. So I sort of had a good think at the end of the year and thought um, maybe it's time just to, to step away and, and just focus on footy for a little bit and yeah, um, and yeah relinquish that. And fortunately we had Cuz there who was doing a great job and he was um, could yeah, definitely take over in his, in his own right. So uh, yeah, looking back, probably the best thing I did just to, to yeah. free the mind a little bit and uh, and yeah, just get back to, to trying to play as well as I could and, and help the, the team out that way. Speaking of one of the best things you've done, uh, I've got to backtrack a little bit. Westminster, you meet Jordana there. How'd that come about? And, and I'm sure she's been a, a great support. In fact, I know she has been, by the time off the field, she's been a huge supporter of yours. What's that sort of been like and yeah. meant to you over the years? It was, yeah, so I think Snapchat came in around uh, 20, 2008, 2009 right. maybe. And yeah. as all good relationships do, start on uh, social media of some exactly. sort. And yeah, no, we went to school together. Uh, but yeah, probably we didn't get together till uh, university days. And, yeah. and um, and yeah, no, like you said, she's been awesome for me. Like we've uh, got a good relationship with um, obviously yourself and Ellen as well. Very and, uh, competitive one. Very competitive. very competitive. Lots of board games, Catan. Very uh, serious. Yeah. Game of choice. Um, often comes out in, in me winning and yourself struggling a little bit. So yeah, uh, yeah anyway, it's um, no, nah, she's she's been great. It's been uh, awesome to to experience parenthood with her the last couple of years yeah. and. Uh, have the two little ones, um, yeah, on our hands. But yeah, she's an incredible mother, and uh, certainly couldn't have got through the last couple of years trying to juggle footy yeah. and and uh, her kids at home without her support. So um, yeah, her parents would be probably angry if I didn't give them a shout out as well, because they've yeah, been, been uh, really around every second night trying to help, and yeah. uh, particularly on and out of training. So um, shout out to the in-laws, Fab and Alita, who've been fantastic, and uh, yeah, that's been she's been amazing, and. Um, yeah, should be out there on, on Sunday and, and have, the, have the kids involved, which would be have good fun. Around, yeah, like. yeah. Um, I guess we've, I've, I haven't really touched on some of the individual stuff, but to be one of, I think I mentioned at the start, one of only 25 players to reach 200 games, two best and fairest, state football. What year was state football? Uh, 2016. 2016. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then captain of the club at such a young age. You've got to be sort of really proud of, of those individual achievements. But then we move on to 2019 winning a premiership. It must have been, I guess, a good reward for, for staying the course and, and hanging in there and yeah, um, something yeah. you'll be able to share with, with those Premiership players for forever. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, as you know, it was a great day that 2019 and um, once you've got one of those, you can enjoy reunions and everything yeah. down the track and and uh, yeah, we play the game for the, the team aspect and that sort of far outweighs any individual uh, awards or honours, I guess. So um, yeah, it's been great to, to pick up some of that stuff along the way, but uh, yeah, the 2019 day, you can't can't go past, can't beat it, it's, um, and hopefully we've got um, another one yeah, in us this year. Absolutely. Um, is there anyone else you'd like to thank? It's been a long career. Um, you've been at the club for, th is this your 13th year? Yeah, 13th year this anyone year. Anyone else we've missed? Anyone else you want to cover off before we, we end our discussions? Is there anyone yeah. you can think of? Uh, yeah, my mum and dad, of course, have been uh, yeah, great for my, for my journey. They've barely missed a game over the years, and and uh, probably all started with dad and, and his connection with the club. and. Um, yeah, I was able to, to sort of follow in his footsteps in a way and play league footy and yeah. um, and go down that path. But yeah, mum and dad, my sisters have been great. Um, seeing them both get involved in footy now as well. Yeah. It's been uh, enjoyable to watch. And uh, yeah, no, just a lot of good mates um, across the journey. Yourself, um, Matty Snook, who's the, the best of the years. He yeah, just comes, comes through person. and does his, uh, his month of pre-season training and still uh, gets close to McGarry every year. But yeah. Um, yeah, Benny Sawford as well, probably love a shout out as great well, man. so shout yeah. out to Sawford. Um, but yeah, a lot of great people along the way and, uh, and that's probably what makes footy clubs uh, what they are, it's just the, the people inside the walls and yeah. um, no, I've been very fortunate to, to make some lifelong friendships, so uh, yeah, that's, um, that's about it. Hopefully a few more wins to come for the rest of the year and, and go again next year, eh? Yeah, yeah, I've got four wins left in us and, uh, and then reassess and um, yeah, if, I, if, I, if I'm going in 2023 I'll be... Be uh, back in probably February here. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do, do about four or five weeks. So, uh, nah, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, awesome, mate. Incredible career. 
very lucky to play a small part of it, and I've enjoyed the journey so far, but a few more wins to go. Well done. Beautiful. Thank awesome, you, mate. Well Appreciate done. it. Beautiful.